Popular culture is one of those subjects, much like politics, that everyone thinks they're an expert in. After all, most people consume a lot of popular culture on a regular basis, so they assume they have a good understanding of it. However, unless you're a really big fan of one small piece of popular culture, there are a lot of things that you might have missed. People tend to come up with an idealized version of the most popular and beloved celebrities of past eras or events, and tend to forget the realities of the situation, especially the uglier ones. Sometimes the truth is just beneath the surface, but people, they don't like to see it simply because they don't want to. Number 10. Marilyn Monroe is mistakenly believed to have been bigger than today's models. Marilyn Monroe doesn't really need an introduction. We all know the basics of her origin story, and we see her constantly in memes that are thrown around Facebook and Twitter. Some of the memes claim, quotes on her behalf, that there's shaky or no proof at all that she actually ever said them. The other main variety of memes, though, like to make big claims about her weight without any proof whatsoever. You've probably seen the meme claiming that Monroe was actually much bigger than today's current models. This feeds into the trope that society is getting worse and that before long we will be expecting actresses to have all of their bones showing through their skin or we won't accept them as skinny enough. However, the truth is that researchers who did the real work and tested Monroe's clothes found that she was likely just about the same weight and body shape as your average idealized model or actress today. So the good news is that while our standards haven't got any better, they haven't got any worse either. Number 9. Prince is considered a gay icon, but he turned into a Jehovah's Witness later in life. It may come as a big surprise to those who don't pay attention to their favorite celebrities' religious views, but music legend Prince was a devout Jehovah's Witness and reportedly even knocked on people's doors to try and convert them. While it may sound super cool to have Prince knock on your door, it might not be so cool when you realize he's trying to convert you to a religion. In one of the last times he ever gave a truly comprehensive interview to the media, he talked to Billboard and told them that he didn't believe it was okay in God's eyes to be a homosexual. He never publicly recanted this belief, and when he died, he had drugs like fentanyl and heroin in his system, drugs that he did regularly. There are many songs that he claimed to write while at home every day that he never released. Perhaps there's good reason he never released them, though. Heroin is not exactly known for being great inspiration. Number 8. Lady Gaga doesn't believe in premarital sex and is an extremely devout Catholic. Lady Gaga has shocked the media with her wild antics, which has included wearing almost nothing while having a lot of male dancers do the same thing, wearing dresses made of actual raw meat, and, well, everything in between that. She was the go-to for reactionaries looking for the next alleged threat to your children, and also became a target of some of the most inane and ridiculous conspiracy theories imaginable. However, these days, Lady Gaga is actually one of the most bland, boring, straight-edge, now anyway, she's spoken openly about her past substance abuse issues, and well-behaved individuals individuals you're ever likely to meet. When she's not on tour or otherwise working, she usually just hangs out at home and doesn't go out to party. She doesn't believe in premarital sex and once preached against it to teens on live TV at an awards show. She has also brought up Satan before in interviews, talking about how his evils try to creep up on us and ensnare us into doing bad things. She believes that loving others and doing good is the best solution, of course. Number 7. Ensemble movies have always been a valid format. You don't need a protagonist. Back around the turn of the 21st century, as the Star Wars prequels came out, and some of the older fans were really upset and tremendously disappointed, some found solace in a reviewer who went by the name of Mr. Plinkett. Plinkett, the alias of Mike Staclasa, was presented as psychotic in order to be more entertaining and spent more than an hour breaking down the Phantom Menace and proceeded to go on to review the missteps of the ensuing films in the prequel trilogy. These reviews were wildly popular and seemed to give catharsis to some of the angrier fans. One of his biggest arguments about why the movies were so terrible was that they needed a protagonist, which basically means that they had a single obvious main character. He argued that The Phantom Menace simply wasn't good on a technical level because it didn't have one. As a student of film, though, he should know that this isn't an entirely fair or honest argument. An ensemble movie, where you have a lot of big roles, often played by big-name actors, is a perfectly valid format that goes all the way back to theatre. Indeed, it's a great way to make something more epic in scale or have a lot of egos in one production without them getting too angry with each other. Indeed, this is a valid technique that is used to make a movie seem more epic. Number 6. Rock and metal are likely fading due to economic issues. Right now, rock and metal as music genres are starting to fade into obscurity, though there will always be diehards who follow old bands and there will always be some new ones. Some think this is because people simply don't like that type of music anymore, or that the young generation has been spoiled by the internet and they only want electronic music, or some other concern like that. However, the truth might actually be a lot more banal and 
simply economic. The fact of the matter is that the middle class has been shrinking for some time now, so the idea of forming a garage band with some friends has become something less and less realistic for most teenagers. Even those who are middle class often don't have the spending power that they did a couple of decades ago, and so they're more likely to find electronic music appealing, as you can make most of it at home from your computer without buying a bunch of equipment. With so few people living in houses with yards big enough to not annoy the neighbors, even many wealthier children find the idea of practicing on a drum set, for example, to be rather unrealistic. Further, many parents, they simply don't want to shoulder the cost of expensive instruments and equipment. Number 5. Elvis Presley was nothing more than a white face for a black genre. Many people like to think of Elvis Presley as the king of rock and roll, and he still has a huge following today. Despite the fact that he died a very fat man who was regularly overusing drugs and overeating, many people still revere him today as a sex symbol, and some people back in the day thought that the way he gyrated his hips and got the girls going was rather sinful. Many think he wrote his own songs, especially since he had a co-write credit on most of them, but his contributions they were actually very little. Sometimes he would change up an arrangement or add something here or there, but for the most part, Elvis was not really a songwriter. He had a co-writer credit as part of a deal that his manager set up, but he really didn't contribute in any significant way. In fact, most of his songs were written by black artists like Otis Blackwell, many of whom hailed from genres like R&B or soul. Now, it could be argued that Elvis was a friend to black artists and helped elevate their music as white people wouldn't otherwise listen. But he will always be controversial because some feel that he used too much black music or inspiration from it without giving credit where it was due. Number 4. As spending power decreases, trap music has seen a huge surge in popularity. For those who don't know the term, trap music is a rap style originating primarily from southern states in the USA and typically has a grittier, more atmospheric vibe with a lot of synthesizer use. The trap in trap music refers to the kind of place where a drug deal might take place and the lyrics generally reflect the hardship of life on the streets. This type of music has become increasingly popular lately, including among middle-class suburban white fans, thanks to artists like Migos and Gucci Mane. I hope I'm pronouncing those correctly. Some people think that the surge in popularity is because rap itself and the electronic style that is often fused with it today is simply in fashion. However, even when white people are rapping today, the songs that become hits seem to still be talking about trapping or seem to be about that life. The reason for this is almost certainly due to the depressed economy. As the middle class shrinks and spending power decreases, lyrics about struggling through, working hard and eventually getting rich, even if you don't always do that through proper means, are increasingly increasingly relatable. Number 3. Censors may have been more restrictive, but that doesn't mean people were less crude. You might think of people who watched television in the early days to be huge prudes due to the censorship laws. You could point to ridiculous facts, such as Leave It to Beaver making somewhat controversial history at the time by showing the top of a toilet, shocking audiences around the country. Or along those same lines, how about Alfred Hitchcock showing a toilet flush in Psycho? However, what many people don't know is that it wasn't so much shocking because people were prudes, but because they were amazed that it finally broke through the censors. After all, people know how toilets work already. Everybody poops, after all. Leave it to Beaver, which even the most conservative among us can understand is so wholesome it's saccharine, had plenty of lines that, at least looking back, seemed to be packed with plenty of double entendres. Whether that was intentional or not remains to be seen, of course, but it's hard to imagine any writer passing up on an opportunity to pepper a script with plenty of hidden dirty jokes about the Beaver. And, of course, that's not the only show to seemingly slip in an innuendo here and there. Fans have been picking up on them for years, laughing in retrospect at just how filthy their favorite wholesome sitcoms could be. Number 2. Marvel retcons who the most popular heroes were for licensing reasons. Today, Marvel has one of the most successful, if not the most successful, long-running movie franchise of all time. A huge part of the credit for it goes to insane amounts of planning and long-term slow build-up, and the prescience to lock in a lot of important contracts early on before the actors became way, way too expensive. Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Captain America, and Thor have become synonymous with Marvel and the Avengers, but this wasn't always so. The truth was that characters like the X-Men, Spider-Man, and many others were always the more important heroes, and if Marvel could have had their way from the get-go, they likely would have used characters that were much more well-known. Iron Man and the Guardians of the Galaxy may be hugely popular now, but before the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they were hardly A-list superheroes. If nothing else, this once again shows the genius of Marvel's planning, as they made you forget about all the heroes that they couldn't originally use. 
Number 1. DC deserves plenty of blame, but Superman is a very hard story to tell. DC gets a lot of well-deserved flack for their recent spat of movies. They wanted to do what Marvel did, but without the same level of planning and build-up. This means they've found themselves changing things constantly as they go. However, while they do deserve a lot of blame for what many consider lesser movies than their Marvel counterparts, the original Superman movies were hardly that highly acclaimed either. A huge part of the problem is simply that Superman is an incredibly hard story to tell, and most of DC's new series of movies were based largely around him as an introspective character. There is only so much you can do with a character who is basically an all-powerful god most of the time, or an oversized toddler in a caped onesie if he comes into contact with kryptonite. His internal struggles are also entirely unrelatable to many of us. The truth is, Superman would be best as part of an ensemble movie where he just comes to fight and help every now and again, appearing perfectly together, happy and heroic as we all imagine him to be, without the need for a self-reflecting origin story that no one asked for. By setting the bar so high with Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, DC essentially painted themselves into a corner. With billions in box office from those Batman films, the decision was made that the best way to present any of their heroes, including Superman, was in a darker, grittier setting. And frankly, that's just not what people want to see from the last son of Krypton, the ultimate Boy Scout whose appeal has largely been based on his ability to inspire hope. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, give us a thumbs up below. And don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And as always, thank you for watching.